Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another Postman tutorial. This time we're gonna look at an advanced workflow that can be implemented with Postman. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I have here a collection and this collection includes multiple requests. Now, if I was to run this collection using Newman or using the collection runner, it will simply start running the first request, the second and so on. Now, let's imagine that I have different scenarios where I want to run these requests in a different order. So for example, in one scenario, I would like to run the first request, the third request, and the fifth and the sixth request. And in another scenario, maybe I wanted to run the first and second and stop or something like that. So there are definitely different ways on how you can run this collection. Now, if this was only one scenario, I could have used postman set next request in order to navigate, for example, if I knew in advance that I want always to go from the first request to the second one, or from the second one to the fourth one, from the fourth one to the third one, and so on. But if I have different paths, so different ways I'm gonna run this request, uh, it would make the scripting part very, very inconvenient or very complex. And I wanted to introduce you a possible solution or a possible concept to handle such a specific scenario. And that would be to use a router. Now, a router is usually used in web applications in order to contain the information that is necessary in order to navigate somewhere. So, for example, to navigate from a page to another page, usually you will have like a router component that knows everything that's regarding navigation. And we're going to build something pretty similar in Postman as well. So instead of having so much logic in each and every request, the only thing that the requests will need to do is to communicate with the router and the router will know exactly where to go. I have mentioned the word iterations. And in this scenario, we definitely have multiple iterations. And every time when we're discussing iterations in Postman, the first thing that pops in our mind should be external data files. And this is exactly what I have defined here. I have defined a roots.json, which contains different paths that I want to use my requests for. So in the first scenario, I want to go from the first to the second to the third and the fourth request, not executing the fifth and the sixth request. In the second run, I will start again with the first request, then the second, then the third, then the fifth request. And so on. I can add as many routes and scenarios as I want. Now, what I have here is simply an array which contains multiple options and each object has a roots property and this roots property is an array. So this is just a way for me to make it easier to read this information later in Postman and it makes it easier to configure it and I don't, I have this external configuration that I do not have to store within Postman and it's, this definitely makes it easier to start different runs. Now, in order to get everything to work in Postman, I have added a new request. And that request is actually the first request that will be executed and I've called that request router. The only thing that I have edited in the request is in the tests, I have added this instruction, which basically tells Postman, after you have executed this request, go back to the router. So what will happen is that when any of these requests will be executed, they will finish the execution and go back to the router and the router will tell Postman where to go next. So let me show you exactly how this will look like. So I'm going to use the collection runner in order to run this collection. I will select the data file with my JSON configuration, the roots.json file. And now I'll start the collection. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that we have three iterations and this is exactly what we wanted. Let's see exactly how they work. So first it went to the router and then the router said, go to the first request. After that, went back to the router and then executed the second request. 
and then the third request and the fourth request, and then it stopped. So the router decided this is the exact configuration, there's nothing else to do. And so on and so forth. All these conditions that we have defined in the JSON file, uh, they have been executed by the router. So for that reason, let's go back and see exactly what a router does and how does everything work. Let me now show you the contents of the router. So I'm going to open the router request and go to the tests tab and the entire functionality can be seen here. And I'm going to explain everything line by line. The first thing that will be executed is this postman set next request. And what this does is to go to the next request as indicated here by a string. And we are calling this function just to keep our code organized, get next request. And it goes like this. What happens initially is that we are reading the routes from pm.iteration data. That is the file with the iterations. And this is the pm star function that allows us to read this information. So we have these routes initialized here. And what we do next is we need to figure out which one is the next request that we want to execute. And we do that by getting the first element from the array. And we're using this JavaScript function called shift. And what this does is pops, let's say pops out the first element from the array, and that will be the next request. And at the same time, it reduces the size of the roots. And for that reason, the remaining roots will be saved to a global variable called remaining roots. Now, if it happens that roots.shift doesn't have any more elements, so if the array is empty, shift will then return undefined. And if it's undefined, then what we'll do is that we'll clear this global variable because we have no other remaining roots and we are going to return null. Returning null when using postman set next request makes postman stop the execution. So this will be like the final step and postman will not do anything else. Otherwise, we're going to return the next request that we have from the roots. Now going back to the beginning of the code, we are checking first if the remaining roots is an array and if they are still remaining roots, because otherwise we have cleared them. And if they are remaining roots, we're going to initialize the roots here. So there are two options. We either use the roots from the iteration data. We only do that once when we start. Otherwise, we read this global variable remaining roots so that you can keep track during the iteration how many roots there are left. I'm pretty sure that the code can be even further improved, but at least as it stands, it does a pretty good job. The disadvantage of using the router as a request is that we have this additional overhead. So after executing each request, we have to call the router. And the router in itself is a request. It's going to example.com. And this costs us additional time and we don't really need it. So what we're trying to do is to keep the router as a concept, but to try to eliminate this overhead with a request. So what I will do is I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to remove it from the router. If I'm editing the collection, I have the possibility of defining the test script and this test script will be executed with every request. So now, instead of having each request go to the router, we have defined this code that is reusable and is available for each request to execute. Now, we don't need the router as a request anymore, but there's still a small catch. If you are always starting with a first request, you don't need anything here before. But if your request order is a bit different in the sense that Sometimes you need to start with a third request or with a sixth request or so on. You may still need to introduce here a request. Let's call it like initializer or something like that, because Postman doesn't have the possibility of routing with a first request. You first execute the first request in the collection and then after that you can go somewhere else. So for that reason, we, you still need like a dummy request in the beginning to start the routing process. 
I don't need that, so I'm going to remove the router. Now, after deleting the router, there's still a thing that we need to change. Now, we still have in all of our requests this set next request to the router. So we're going to remove that because this is no longer necessary. I just wanted to graphically show you how exactly it works to have a router. But as I have explained, there is an overhead to this. All set. Now let's open the collection runner and see if this still works. Now there's still a very small glitch here, uh, namely the first request is being executed two time. For that reason we need to remove that from our JSON file that defines the routes because we already call the first request by default. But apart from that it seems to be running without any issues and we don't need the extra router request there. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Make sure you check the video description for more updates regarding this video and for other useful tips and tricks. Subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up and see you next time at another tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.